Hi, and welcome to another video by Fortune Buchholz of Not Fortune School. Uh, those of you who have been following along may recall that I promised several videos uh, dealing with my work with Chiro Marchetti's Fin de Siècle Kipper Deck. So here's the third video in which I start reading. Per request, um, people have asked me to do a line of five, a square of nine, and a full grand tableau in, mixed with Lenormand as I illustrate uh, briefly due to space limitations um, in Chiro Marchetti's companion document. So that's what I'll do. Please uh, bear in mind that it takes me two, maybe three days to make each video just, you know, due to life. And so, um, you know, please be patient with that. And I really thank you for your uh, support and understanding. Uh, so that said, uh, the, this video is just going to be kind of an introduction to my method of reading, my approach to reading, the way I lay out the line of five, and how I interpret the, the line of five. It's going to be a verbal explanation of the mechanics, right? Uh, and then I'm just going to go and cut to a pure voiceover and just put a static picture of the layout on the screen so you guys can easily follow along, right? Sometimes in car videos it's a little hard if they just aim the camera, you know, to see all of the car clearly, particularly in a line of five, so I'm just going to go ahead and do it that way, and I hope you don't mind. So thanks for understanding. Okay, that done. Now, let's go on to the way that I personally read the cards. Obviously, I get a lot of questions about what is the right way, what is the traditional way, you know, my way or the highway or somebody else's highway, whatever, dude, right? Um, all of these methods of reading these German cards, of course, come from German cardomancy. And as I've shown you in my past two videos, which dealt with history and background of the deck, it's all a remix, right? It's always been a mashup. It's always been, you know, a wash, right? You can, in fact, if you want, read these cards as tarot, although I don't understand the point, right? Because then just read tarot personally. And you can read them as playing cards with counting and other, you know, playing card type methods and that's great too, but then I'm going to ask you the same question, why not just read playing cards? You know, so do whatever works for you. I'm going to show you the long elaborate storylines, the sort of novelistic and psychological aspects that I personally prefer to read and, you know, you may take that for what it's worth, if anything. All right, so that said, of course, as you know, I am not a fortune teller, right? I do not consider myself to be quote unquote psychic any more than anyone else. If anything, the, the psychic person in the room is always my co-listener, my sitter, right? Um, who is with me, right? The reading is in the relationship. I'm a firm believer that absolutely everyone has their own best answers inside themselves. It's merely a question of adjusting their narrative and accessing their own truth, right? Cards are just a mirror that make all of that objective and easier to articulate for people, right? So many people don't know. In fact, most people have been, have been taught actively to ignore how they feel, to ignore their own positive internal dialogue and focus only on negative self-talk, right? And have been taught not to solve their own problems or not to marshal their own inner resources. So to claim that I have some kind of high, you know, higher special reader, whatever power that they do not is totally counterproductive to our goal of helping people through self-empowerment and helping them create a new narrative that's based in their own truth. If people don't own their own truth, if they don't own what they see in the reading, right, they won't necessarily act on it and it won't have as much value to them. So um, we avoid a lot of problems about dependency, about people coming in over and over for the same reading repeatedly. You know, we avoid all that by simply adopting this method uh, in which people own their truth and thereby have the ability, the means, and the desire to move forward and take constructive, positive action as they determine best based on their own knowledge, right? They're the experts in their lives. We are not. So again, that's my, you know, approach. Other people, you know, have other approaches, and that's perfectly fine, but that's just not what I do. So that said, all right. Now, what I want to talk about uh, is how I actually lay out and read the line of five. For lines of five, I do like to choose a significator, not so much for me, but again, for my co-sitter, for my listener, right? For someone who is in dialogue with me, it makes the storyline easier for them to understand, and it really emphasizes the fact that they are the owners of the storyline. It's not about, you know, so-and-so, it's not about the past, it's not blah, 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 it's not them or us, it's, you know, it's about them and 
who they are, what they can do, what their own storyline is, right? And this is a, a means of focusing, you know, on the person in front of me and creating a relationship with them and allowing them to create a relationship with themselves, again, using the cards as a mirror. You may not like this technique, that's fine, right? Uh, as I said, I'm not gonna, uh, there is no Kipper dictator, and if there were, I would not be she. So, you know, that's just the way I do it, and that's the way we're gonna proceed. So, thank you so much. Other people may do it differently, for better or for worse, but this is the way that I do it. So then let's go ahead and talk about the actual layout of the line of five, right? Um, and so, what I always do, as I said, is I put the significator in the middle, then I put four cards on either side. I usually lay them out one, five, two, and four, right? With the third card being the significator in the middle. Bingo, excellent. And then I usually read them as, as the uh, middle cards, that is card two and card four, as describing the center card, the significator card. Then I pair cards one and two, then I pair cards four and five, then I pair cards one and five. And by that time, we usually have enough information to help the sitter get their narrative and their dialogue started. And from that point in time, you know, people can start to actually have the important internal uh, but uh, articulate dialogue that they need to actually address and move forward with their issues, right? They may sometimes receive homework even, right? That's very important. People should commit to actual, you know, positive action, whether it's journaling or, you know, meditating on it or, you know, whatever action seems appropriate to them, right for their situation and which they can own and will be willing to do. So, you know, that's just the simple kind of layout of the cards. I do not generally just lay the cards down and read them from one side to another. Although in some, some elements of directionality of certain cards, um, are important and I will also take those into account in sort of just generally summing up the uh, entire statement of the cards and I do as everyone knows prefer to offer in conclusion a crisp overview all right uh, and that's just the way as I said that I will read a line of five I don't do a lot of counting right I don't you know, use these playing card type methods. Uh, if I did, I, I would just read German playing cards, which I perfectly know how to do, and you probably do do, do too. Uh, so if I wanted to read playing cards, I would just read playing cards. I also don't tarotize, quote unquote, the cards, because if I wanted to read tarot, I would just, again, read tarot, which I and you all already know how to do. So there's really no benefit to my mind in playing card or tarot for Kipper. Just read the Kipper, ask Kipper, enjoy the beauty of that system, inhale the perfume of the Kipper Geist, as I like to say, you know, get into the concept of the novel, of the psychology, or as Chir Marchetti says, the soap opera of the cards, right? And just let that work for you as is appropriate for the sitter. Right? who is your co-listener, your co-sitter, who is working through this relationship with you and who has honored you by being there. So just, you know, I just like to respect that since the reading is created in the relationship, so to speak, and just to create that neutral holding space, as therapists like to say, whereby people can explore their narrative. Okay, so that said, uh, I'm, you know, done with this portion of the video. I won't talk too much more about the history now or in the upcoming videos. All of that will come in December after I return from my December 1st appointment at the German Playing Card Museum where I'll be looking at a large variety of historic cards from the 17th and 18th century following up on the work of Dr. Uh, Hoffman, the author of the Warsaw Carton catalog that you've seen me talk about so often. And I'll be looking with the head archivist there of a whole bunch of cards, the original boxes, the original instructions, all of the materials there, and the antecedents to kind of bring you a fuller picture. But that's later on in December. So uh, please uh, sit back, uh, relax, as they say, e enjoy the voiceover section, which will be coming up very shortly. So thanks so much, and have a great day. I really hope you enjoy this video, this five card reading. Hi, here I am. I'm back again. We're now in the voiceover portion of this video, this five card reading. So uh, let me just go ahead and uh, sort of set up the background for this. Of course, before we begin, I want to say that I'm proceeding with this reading 
uh, in all consciousness of ethics, right? So while this reading is in fact based on the root situation of a sitter, a dear friend of mine, uh, the details have obviously been changed as ethics require, and the sitter has in fact given, you know, consent to have even their root issue brought forth as a teaching illustration. So this is what I consider the ethical responsibility to be, and I'm sure that all of you listening would do no less. We always must treat our uh, sitters' confidences and situations with the utmost care and concern, and we must always respect the highest levels of confidentiality. So um, that said, let's go ahead and then just describe the cards that you're seeing laid out before you. All right, so the cards that we see are in the center, the main female, the hopped person, or as I like to say, the lady. The card immediately to her left is the false person, card number eight. The card immediately to her right is the wealthy man, uh, the rich man, which I like to call the millionaire, card 13. The card to the far left is number seven, traditionally pleasant message. Uh, Chiro calls it a uh, message. I may sometimes call it the letter, although of course it's any kind of communication. And then the card on the far right is card 30, magistrate, or as Chiro calls it, judication. I tend to use the term magistrate because I think it's something that people understand very directly, uh, the function of the card and its position in society at the time. All right, so uh, there's the cards, and you can just see them uh, above in the static picture. If you want to follow along, you can just look at the picture, or you can lay out your own cards and take your own notes, as works for you. So as I described in the video portion, uh, we're just going to leap to the reading after I state the question and the background of the situation. So the person uh, we're reading for here today uh, is a person who identifies as female, uh, now, although they did not always do so in the past. Uh, but now they identify as female, and so I will continue to use, as they prefer, the pronoun she. Uh, she has received a message from a man uh, she was connected to in her past uh, before she owned her identification and uh, came forth as her true self. Uh, and uh, she would like to know, one, whether she should respond to this, and if so, how. Two, if this message is sincere or insincere. And three, um, sort of uh, examine the feelings that she has about having been contacted by this person uh, from the past. So let's just go ahead and... Um, and just go through the cards in a very literal fashion, right? As is with Lenormand, uh, Kipper cards can be very literal, although they do also have a second multivalent abstract sense to them. Uh, and you can see that I talk about both senses of, of literal and abstract in the companion document uh, to Chiro's uh, deck. And I'm sure you've read that for yourselves, or you can download that and then read that once you've bought the deck. So let's go ahead and talk about the two cards, cards 8 and cards 13, that surround the lady here. So we can see that uh, card 8 is, you know, false person. It's a sense of wrongness. There's something definitely not right. And uh, the lady certainly feels like she's in a situation right now in regards to this communication where it's wrong. It rings hollow to her and it makes her feel uncomfortable. So it's definitely a false person situation. Then um, we see uh, ahead of her, again, uh, the wealthy man or the millionaire. And this does, in fact, describe a man, the person who left her this message. And when we pair the two cards together, 8 and 13... Uh, in and of themselves, uh, she does describe the fact that uh, this man was not always an honest person. She felt that he could be manipulative, that he had his own agenda, that uh, he was deceitful uh, in the past, in their, in their previous relationship, and this is what contributes to her sense of unease. 
All right, so these uh, two cards, 8 and 13, sort of describe the situation that the lady finds herself embedded in, and uh, she feels it's very pertinent and relevant to her situation. So let's go on and follow the next step of the reading, which is to start uh, again with cards 1 and 2, or in this case, cards 7 and 8. The uh, Card 7 is the pleasant message, and card 8 is the false person message. As we know, card 8 has the power to make the card next to it invalid. That is, it will actually turn a good card, pleasant message, into its opposite. So this suggests to us that uh, the sitter is justified in considering that there is something un uh, uncomfortable uh, in this message, that this message is not what it seems. It's not a straightforward effort at reconciliation or getting back into touch. The, it's not going to be simply a, a straightforward, friendly, how are you doing after all this time kind of message, but that there is something to be you know, cautious about. Now, of course, she felt that way to begin with, right? But then, naturally, she had all of these doubts, right? Because, again, it was a question of her being able to own her own intuition to own her own instinct and to trust what in fact she was feeling when she got this message. So this feeling is confirmed for her and and you know we always want to encourage people who have these feelings based on rational past events to you know accept their feelings and and understand that feelings offer you information and they're important to listen to you examine them objectively you do make sure they're appropriate for the current circumstance but you don't ignore them right they have beneficial information for you so um that confirms, you know, her feeling, and so she was very glad about that. Then let's go ahead and move to cards 13 and 30, the millionaire and the magistrate. So these uh, two cards do describe the profession of the person from whom she received the message. He is a professional person in an advisory role. And um, so she felt like that this was a case of the cards correctly identifying the nature of the message, validating how she felt about the message, allowing her to own her own intuition about the message, and that it was in fact, you know, the correct feeling she had based on her experience with this person, which she then, you know, examined at some length in an objective manner, and what would the positives or negatives be to return this message, various ways she could respond to this message and what their likely outcomes would be for her, and what it is that she really wanted or might want now uh, in this new phase of her life as opposed to what had happened in the past. And so after carefully discussing that and really, you know, accessing her own truth, she discovered that she really did not want to respond to this person. She did not really want to renew contact with this person. She really wanted uh, to just leave that kind of past behind her and move into a more productive, uh, straightforward, and healthy a set of relationships now and in the future. Uh, so she decided, which is again card 30, now pairing card 5 with card 1, card 30 and card 7. So her decision was to respond with a no. And again, this is another way of seeing the multivalent meaning of the cards. The uh, message will be 7 and 8. It will be a message of no, right? false, meaning no, wrong, right? So what she intended to do was to write a response to this person reply, asking that he never contact her again, and that um, the past had gone, it was water under the bridge, and that she did not feel uh, that there was any productivity in remaining in contact, and that it was better that they both go their separate ways, and that she, you know, wished him his own success in his own future, but that there was no purpose in renewing their friendship or contact at this time. Uh, so she was very happy with this outcome. She felt like it directly addressed her question that the Kipper had given her a straightforward answer, but it also allowed her a psychological moment to actually look 
uh, in a neutral and objective manner at, at what her feelings really were, what she really wanted, and how she could move forward in a productive manner while, as I said, owning her own truth and trusting her own intuition. So she really benefited from this reading and she was very happy to have it. So uh, this, again, is how I uh, read the cards. This is a very simple line of five. So my concise statement uh, is to respond and say no. And that, you know, sort of answers the question. The message is not sincere. She should respond and say no thank you. So that's in fact um, what she did and that was my crisp uh, two sentence answer to her. And uh, I hope this made sense to you. If you have any other questions, of course, uh, about this reading or this style, please go ahead and just ask me. You can uh, send me a message on my Facebook page or, you know, contact me through my other social media. I really hope you enjoyed this. And again, look for two more videos from me, which will be a square of nine and then the grand tableau in a few days. So thanks so much. I hope you enjoyed this and have a great day.